I'm not going to build anything for the rest of my life. Welcome to the Jared Williams Show. What's up, dude? I definitely I gave that, that one that to you. There. <laughs> no, you did. That was actually perfect. Was it? Was it right there. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, no, but I'm pretty sure. All right. Well, whatever. Yeah, you know, only time will tell. Dude, I've been working on building a, um, like a workbench in my garage. Oh, cool. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. How much do you enjoy woodworking? I freaking hate it, dude. <laughs> Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. When I built my house, and it's been like, gosh, it's been like three, almost four years since I finished mm -hmm. building my house. Maybe mm -hmm. three. I'll say three. I swore to myself and everybody else in the world that I'm not going to pick up another tool and do another, <laughs> put any, I'm not going to build anything for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. And I stuck with it for a long time. But then like recently, I'm like trying to figure out what my hobbies are and mm -hmm. I'm like getting this itch. I like, I need to like, I need to build something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. Well, maybe you're just, maybe you just have to admit to yourself that maybe you do like it i do i do like building things i've always liked building things i just mm -hmm. thought that i was gonna build things from now on in just a different way like build businesses and yeah sure things like that um but i started missing like having that hands-on sure yeah and, and seeing a finished mm -hmm. product yeah so i bought a i bought a van you know that but about yep. that i bought a new van and mm -hmm. then i'm gonna turn it into a camper van give me something mm -hmm. to do yeah. So I'm building this workbench. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the most epic workbench on the planet, uh -huh. which is super cool. Um, it's my table saw is going to be set in it. My router is yep. going to be set in it. Yep. It's going to be rad. It's going to yep. be awesome. Are you just doing it from the top of your head? Yeah. I mean, I designed it all. I wrote it, you know, I drew a sketch yeah. of it and then. Yeah, I gotcha. Ordered all the parts. What's super cool about living in Florida is I mm. went on Home Depot's website and I just bought everything I needed and had it all delivered. Did they bring you the right stuff though? Did you get the yeah, right dude. stuff? Oh, yeah. wow. And like yeah. in Fairbanks, like when you get a two by four, it's always all crooked. Yeah, definitely. And so you always have to order extra so you can throw away the crooked ones or use yep. them somewhere else. Yeah. Dude here, straight as an arrow. Every single really? two by four. Every single one? Awesome. Yeah, it was weird, rad. dude. Yep. Yeah. It was super cool. I ordered the all the tools, all the wood, everything. The one time when I built that chicken trailer... I was like, I'm just going to have Lowe's get like all my stuff so I don't have to waste time doing it. And yeah. they got so many things wrong that I was like, that's why people don't do this because it's yep. a pain in the butt because all my stuff is wrong. Yep. So I'm surprised that they got all your stuff right. That actually it's makes that service like helpful. It's actually useful. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. It was rad. It was pretty cool. Huh. I was stoked. Yeah. I was working on that today. Hmm. Yeah. I think there is something to like having a physical product with your hands that you put together. Like yeah. I know even that like when I went and dug out my neighbor, she got her car stuck and I dug mm -hmm. it out of the snow. That was a great two hours for me. It was right. so fun. I was like, this is yeah. awesome. Like I'm out here. I'm like working. I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Yep. I think there's something to that physical side, especially for those of us who don't do the physical side anymore. You're right. Yeah. Yep. It's a fun, it's a fun uh, escape even. Yeah. And I used to do lots of physical stuff and zero computer work. So everything was yeah. physical. Yep. Um, yeah. And I enjoyed it for a long time. And then I grew to just hate it. And now that I'm out of it, right. it's like, yeah. hmm, I actually kind of missed that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think but I wanna, the cool part about now is now I get to do it on my own terms. Yeah, sure. You're not having to do it to meet some need that's necessary. You're like, oh, right. I can like take my time and build this table. And then you can also go and I can buy all this stuff for it instead yeah. of like, ah, well, I yeah. would do this, but I have to go use pallets because I don't have any money to buy real wood. So this is right. another thing. Yeah. Yep. And it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another cool thing is like, as I get older, I get more patient with mm. building things. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm okay with like building my workbench and making it super, super sweet. Yeah. And taking my time on it and it taking yeah. a few days versus trying mm -hmm. to bang it all out in one day and it being kind of janky. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Kind of. Well, it was good except for that one thing, which is kind of weird, but I don't want to redo it. So eh, it's yeah. good. Yeah. But I got it done today. <laughs> yeah, I got right. it done today. It's just yeah, one of the legs was really time. short, really short leg. Yeah. Don't know why I cut it that way. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's definitely more how I used to be. Or, you know, like you mess up a cut on a really expensive piece of wood. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go buy a new piece because it was expensive. Yeah. 
Now I don't care as much. For me, it was always, I just don't want to go make another trip to the stupid hardware store to buy another piece of wood. Right. Like I'll uh, just order on Home Depot, though. And then those, yeah, I, I can't do yeah. that. They'd be like, yeah, it'll be there in three weeks. Like three weeks? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like you're right down the road. Like, well, come get it. Like, I don't want to yep. go get it, though. Why do you offer that service? Yeah. Well, because yeah. corporate offers that service. So we have to offer that service. Exactly. Oh, anyway, no. um, excuses will keep you poor. That's what we're talking about today. Cool. Yeah. I can't think of one. One excuse? <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, I hear excuses all the time when I'm like coaching mm. clients on how to grow their plumbing business. Mm hmm. And I don't know that there's like one excuse, but it's there's these people that just make excuses for things, right? Oh, like, sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Like, yeah. I know oh, what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't, I didn't have time to get to that. So I didn't do that yet. Right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's probably a, that's probably one that I hear a lot. Yeah. I had this happen and this happen and this and this. And I just didn't have time, you know, between work and family and, Blah, 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 blah. Um, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seems and, to me that one is that one is always like, because whenever I like start to go down that path, like, oh, Jared, I didn't have time to do that. Where sometimes it's like, I don't know. Is there a place where that could be legitimate? Where like you really didn't have time? I don't think so. But what if I like... Think, I think you could say, I, I didn't make the time to do that sure yeah of course a much more accurate description yes um, or yes, i agree or i decided to spend my time on these other things rather than yes. this right because i think this was more valuable right yeah that that's the point sense. i was getting that's the point that i was getting to but it's just in the phrasing where it's like yes. when you say i didn't have the time to do it that's communicating something different than like I chose not to make the time because I believe right. that these things are more valuable because what's great right. about that answer is then you can go, Hey, this is why you're wrong. This is why those things are not more valuable and you should have made the time. Like exactly. So man, that, this is like, that's actually a really good thing to think about when we're being coached or when we're asking somebody to help us is when mm -hmm. we don't meet an expectation to be, to really be careful how we tell them whoever it is, our boss, whoever, why we didn't meet it. Yep. Because if we just give them that excuse, if I didn't have the time, then one, you don't know how to, you don't know how to, you don't know what to do after that, right? You're like, right. okay, well, why didn't you have the time? And then I just go off on this tangent about, well, you know, Jimmy had a soccer game and all this kind of stuff, and and then I would um, say, so you just chose to t spend your time on those things instead of this thing, and then I'd say, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I guess I did choose, but like really at the time, it didn't feel like I had the time. Mm -hmm. And actually, that might be part of it, where if we don't consider the idea that we make time for activities in our life, mm -hmm. we might not even think in that way, right? Because That's very, very true. Because I might not even think that, actually, I need to choose what to do, and I need to understand that I have a limited amount of time, and I need to yep. be very particular about what I'm going to do at this time. Yeah, one of our friends used to always tell me, Eric Gettinger, you, you used to tell me, you only have time for what you make time for. It's true. And it's a very, very true statement. But it, used to drive me, it used to drive me insane, right? Because I, I was like, it, dude, yeah. you know what? Screw you. I don't got no time. <laughs> but <laughs> You got time. You just haven't made time for it yet. But it drove me nuts just pretty much because of what you said is that I didn't understand that, that that's literally true, that I have to actually like go make the time to do the things that I need to do in order to, to move forward. And I just didn't understand that. And I didn't understand like using my time purposefully sure, on yeah. those things. It was yeah. like I I reacted to the day rather than me making time to do what I needed to do. Right. And that's probably that... that's probably an easy thing for most people, especially going from, you know, like being a plumber to owning a plumbing business or mm -hmm. or anything. Any but he go into work and then coming into owning a business. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pretty common thing. Like you, you're used to going to work and you have your job and right. you're told what to do and you're just going through the motions, like very reactionary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. when you start a business, it's like, okay, I got to figure out what are the most important things I should be doing. And I got to figure out when I'm going to get those done, what I'm going to 
not do to get these things done. Right. Because there's always yeah. a sacrifice. Always. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think probably the best way to get out of that, out of like, you know, I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. I think most people fail to be efficient with their time. Mm. You know? Yep. How do you become efficient with your time? So it's like, it's little things. It's like, like if I know I have to do something, a bunch of something, if I can stack it all into one time slot, that mm -hmm. makes me way more efficient. Because then I have one setup, my brain is in one train of thought, and mm -hmm. then I have one, you know, takedown or whatever. So like mm -hmm. filming for me, I'll film once a month. I mm -hmm. could film mm -hmm. once a week, but it's way more efficient for me to film once a month. Right. Or even in like in the morning, like, cause I like to wake up. I like to do my journal, read my Bible, drink my coffee. Um, like if I was to wake up, hop in the shower, you know, wake up, brush my teeth, hop in the shower, then go downstairs, grab my coffee, mm -hmm. do my journal, read mm -hmm. my Bible. Then I'm already ready for the day versus wake up, brush my teeth, go downstairs do coffee, journal, Bible reading, then go back upstairs. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. just that one trip upstairs. Yeah, sure. It wastes like 10 minutes, maybe 15 sure. minutes. Sure. Versus just kind of reorganizing your day to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. Yeah, especially if it could minimize you getting distracted along the way, you know? True. Like as stupid as it sounds, we're like, all right, I'm gonna go take a shower. And suddenly you're walking through your kitchen and you're checking mm -hmm. something in your kitchen and then you wanted another bowl of cereal and then the TV was on and then you make it like, you could see how it could, a phone yeah. rings, you gotta answer the phone call. Like you could see how eventually you probably just wouldn't take a shower and you just yeah. skip a bunch of stuff. Like it just wouldn't work. Yeah, the phone ringing is a big one. That's a big <laughs> yeah. distractor. Like yep. you can be more efficient just by getting rid of distractions. Like if you know... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, there was a long time there where I woke up and I went to work and then I didn't check my email until a certain time. Mm -hmm. Like I gave mm -hmm. myself an allotted amount of time to get stuff done before I distracted myself with email. Right. I've been thinking lately about during the times that I want to work, putting my phone in airplane mode mm -hmm. so I don't get any texts, I don't get any notifications. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done working, completely done brains out of work mode then i'll pick up my phone turn it off airplane mode yeah see yeah. my text messages respond to yeah. them then rather than getting distracted yeah that's a good point i think especially for like those of us in jobs or businesses where we are in control over our workflow mm -hmm. is having uninterrupted time to actually get the stuff done because I wa i'll watch my calendar and I'll watch it move my tasks that I haven't completed, typically because I get interrupted with something. And yep. some, usually it's like a good thing that I'm interrupted with. But at the same time, that's not necessarily a, oh, this needed to happen right now kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I read a book called The Power. No, it wasn't The Power of One More. That was a good book. But there was it was one thing, I think it was called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what it was called. Don't quote me on that one because I don't remember it totally. But the gist of the book was basically asking yourself at the beginning of each day, like, what's the one thing that I could do today oh, yeah, that's going to sure. be that's going to propel me forward the most? And then taking the time, setting aside the time mm. to work on that one thing with no distractions. So like, yeah, so that you can accomplish it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lock yourself in the office. Go lock your door, tell, put your phone on silent, right? Or airplane mode and then say, okay, I'm sitting here till from this time to this time to work on this one thing and then work mm -hmm. on that one thing. Mm -hmm. And if you do that every day um, and make time to work on the things that are going to move you forward before you know it, and you've moved forward a long ways, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's know, really, like, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like for me, I've done that before where there was a time in my business when we grew to have three or four techs going and I would go into the office and I would try to work in the office to get stuff done, like to work on our price book and to work on Service Titan, um, and just getting all those systems together. And the guys would come in and distract me all the time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. How did so you go going, Jared? 
Working hard or hardly like, working. Doop, doop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I started being, I started going like, okay, well, if I go in there, I'm going to get totally distracted. So instead, like these two days a week, I'm not going to go in till noon and I'm going to stay home and I'm going to work on my computer. And I'm not, and I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to work mm-hmm. on this so that I can get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like, to me, like a practical application, maybe even to our audience is just like, because I would say pick maybe, pick maybe two things, right? Pick something that's really work related that you mm-hmm. can, that you know that like, for me, it's always content creation because content creation, I have a deadline. It's something that I will procrastinate on because it's just like, it's just yep. something where it's just like, oh, this is just such like a, it's not so bad when you're in it, but like, you know, I have all these pent up emotions coming into it. Like it's going to take forever. Yeah. It's hard, blah, blah, blah. So I'll yep. procrastinate on it and then I'll just make it up on weekends, nights, whatever. Like I'll know I'll mm-hmm. get it done. I'll just do it with it, a lot of anxiety. So pick something that gives you a high anxiety that if you don't finish it, it's really bad. And I mm-hmm. would say make that your block and then pick something outside of work and give that a block so that you can, like if you have a hobby and you can afford an hour of time, go yep. be like to your family, be like, hey, I'm practicing this hobby and like, make sure it's like, makes sense. Like, don't just be like, all right, wife, you got all the kids. I'm just going to go uh, do my thing. Okay. Like go play video games. Yeah. Like don't, yeah. Don't be a punk about it. Like <laughs> be like, you know, make sure it fits, but then just go and do the same thing. Cause then you can sort of have this experience in both of your worlds. I feel like that that would help. Yeah, it would help. I think in the work experience, you should really look at like what you do every day. Mm hmm. And figure out what, you know, there's the 80-20 rule. Figure out what you spend, like what you what it is that you're spending your time on that's really moving the needle forward. Mm-hmm. And for me, that'd be like, okay, what makes me the most money? Like right. what are the high what are the highest level tasks that make me the most money? So the 80-20 rule says 20% of what you do is responsible for 80% of your outcome. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you can focus on that 20%, then it's going to grow the amount of outcome you have. Basically, Mm -hmm. you're going to make more money, right? You're going to be way more efficient, way more productive. And so I know like there were times in my business where I would write down all the things that I had to do. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't fall in that 20% range, I would automate them if I could. If I couldn't Mm -hmm. automate them, I would delegate them. And if I couldn't delegate them, um, I would ask myself, do I even need to do this at all? Sure. And a lot of times I didn't have to do that thing. Right? right. And so then getting rid of all those tasks and then reshifting my focus to that top 20% w- just allowed me to push forward on the things that actually really mattered in my business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's worth it to take the time just to do that. Right. Sure. So yep. If you can take the time to do that and focus on your 20%, it's going to have a huge impact on your business. Right. So I'd probably encourage, you know, all business owners, especially if they're struggling with time management, to just write down all the tasks that they have to do or all the tasks that they normally do. Mm-hmm. Go, which one of which ones of these tasks mm-hmm. are my top 20%? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then automate, delegate, and get rid of the rest. Mm-hmm. I think that's that'd be huge for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It'd make a lot of time available. Yeah, and it would feel there'd be a lot of less anxiety flying around because then you wouldn't feel like you had a million things to do and you couldn't possibly get to them. Right. You'd be able to house. You'd be able to house clean some of those items and just get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I know mm-hmm. th- that is a very common thing for like people who are growing a business. You know, they feel like there's a lot of stuff to do and it all falls on them. And it can be mm-hmm. pretty overwhelming at times. And I think if you actually sat down and thought about it and thought about all of the things on your to-do list, you would realize that you don't really have to do all those. And then a lot of them you could have somebody else do. Mm-hmm. And it would really help with your your anxiety for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you... Okay, so that's the excuse you hear the most is I didn't I didn't have time to do it. Yeah. And that's keeping you poor. And it's keeping you poor because you have this, I would say it's keeping you poor because you have a mindset like you are at the mercy of time. Right. And then it is time that affects you. Yeah. 
And so you are just reactionary, like you we talked about. You're re- reacting to life, and you're not really in control of everything. Mm-hmm. And it's more advantageous for you. That'll keep you poor. Yes, but it will. What will help you Very become so. wealthy is to realize that you ultimately are in control of time in the sense yes. that I can choose what to do or what not to do. Yep. Now, of course, outside of big emergencies and all those crazy things, but for me personally, my life is 1% emergency, 99% just normal stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's... You know, it is my responsibility to look at it and be like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm not going to do, and that is how I'm going to achieve this goal. Yep. So, what's another big yeah. excuse? Oh gosh, another big excuse. I mean, you could just say excuses in general, like sure, yeah, sure. Like, um, especially like the blame game, you know, like. Of um, my marketer didn't do this or right. my marketer failed me in this way or, you know, so-and-so did this or so-and-so mm-hmm. did that, like blaming other people. So using mm-hmm. other people or other companies as your excuse mm-hmm. for your business not doing well. Mm-hmm. When in reality, if you're the business owner, then everything falls on you, right? Right. So you get these people where they're, they put these systems in place and they think they're doing a really good job. And then they come to the coaching and they're like, Oh, but you didn't do this. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's your job to understand what your marketing company is doing and hold them accountable. If what they're doing isn't working, that's you. Like you own the business at the end of the day. Right. Sure. So it's all kind of, it's all kind of your back. I think I heard Elon Musk say one time, being a business owner is like having a crap funnel. So -hmm. like everything in the business comes in and then at the end you're at the end of the funnel and -hmm. the only thing that comes out is crap. So you just, (laughs) so you're just dealing with crap all day. Right. And it's kind and it's kind of true, right. Mm -hmm. For a while. Um, you know, you're just, you're building this thing and all the crap just gets funneled down to you. And that's just how it is. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you funnel through all that crap and build a business that doesn't have much crap in it. Yeah. And then you hire somebody to eat that crap so you can go do something else. Yeah. And then you hire people to eat crap. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think that's a pretty accurate analogy, especially when you're when you're building the business. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, is like, so people will get crapped on and then they'll try to blame somebody else for their yeah sure of course. On. and it's in reality it's like no no no. getting crapped on is part of it and then right you taking ownership of the crap is part of it and then learning how to do something about it is also part of it like yeah. the crap is gonna come no matter what it's just what you yeah. do with it that makes sure the difference. sure and so i've seen people just get stuck there that's that's really the bad part is that Hmm. they'll get stuck getting crapped on and they'll just continue to get crapped on and their business will never grow. And they just live in this stage in their business where every time they get crapped on, they blame somebody else. And then they either fire that person or fire that company and then go do something else. But then they get crapped on again and Hmm. it really boils down to them not understanding the problem and not like Hmm. trying to, trying to go in and fully understand it and come up with a solution for it mm-hmm. because they're just trying to switch people. But in reality, it's mm, them and sure. their business, yeah. right? They're the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, they've just, they've been running a business for years, getting crapped on and they never mm-hmm. get out of it. It's pretty lame. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm hearing you say that you're going to get crapped on and the better you get at understanding that and navigating yep. through that, then it's just, Ultimately, it's going to be a better experience. And I think I understood that in like management positions where it's like, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be at the end of, especially in like customer service, like in a customer service management position, like the one that I had, I was always the last person that the customer would talk to. They would cycle Mm -hmm. through everybody telling their story of woe and they'd come to me and I was the one to hear it and make it better or tell them that I can't make it better. Um, And people would always be like, oh man, like, I'm sorry, like that you always have to do that. I was like, "Ah, that's fine. It's, it's what I'm here to do. Like, it's just part of my job and I listen to them and I try to do the best for w- my interests and their interests. And that's just it, you know, but it's okay. And like just owning that fact as a business owner that you're going to be playing that role in a number of ways and that's okay. 
and not to like really analyze yourself and your company that maybe it was your fault and you should probably try to think about something, how to make it better in the future. It's the yeah. only way you're ever going to like relieve that pressure from yourself or right. it's going to just be the same poop coming on you. Like you're never going to get yeah. out of it. Every time you get crapped on, you should be thinking, how <laughs> can I make this not happen again? <laughs> what am I missing? Like, why did I get crapped on? <laughs> I just like to think of this conversation like a literal <laughs> reference. Like, dang, I got I know, pooped I on keep, again. I just keep like, picturing a funnel. And like a bunch of stuff goes in and only the crap comes out. Yeah. And it's like and then on you're the like, business man. owner's head. And they're like, yeah. crap, not again. <laughs> not again. I thought I fixed it. Oh yeah. man. That but that's like right there. That's what you that's what you should say. Dang it, I thought I had that fixed. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I missed I'm, something. How do yeah, I really clearly I'm not get understanding this fixed? something? Yeah. 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 Rather than rather than making the excuse of it's somebody else or something else, mm. just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a life thing too, right? Like if we're talking about like excuses that keep us poor, that can just mm -hmm. be an individual thing. Like Jared, I never have any money and it's because groceries are so expensive and yeah. my car payment is this and all this kind of stuff. I can give you all the reasons why I don't have any yeah. money that aren't yeah. helpful. And when then you reality, could be like, it's just you not going to get more money. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's me not getting yeah. more money or me not like analyzing my life and realizing that I don't, I shouldn't have this car. And those yeah. groceries are unnecessary or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Or you not going and getting a new skill so you can make more money. Yep. Or you not changing your mindset around how you think about money. Mm -hmm. um, like if, like somebody who didn't have any money and if they really wanted more money, they would be reading books about how to get more money. They would be sure following people who have more money. They would be trying to learn as much about how to gain, you know, how to fix your mind, how to, they would get into all of that. And eventually mm -hmm. they would get more money. Mm -hmm. Um, but the guys, but the ones who are just sitting there going, I, I don't have enough money. And then they don't do anything about it. And they just make yeah. the excuse of, I yeah. don't have any money. Yeah. Then they're never going to have money. Yep. It's never going to happen for them. Yep. Yeah. Cause ultimately like, they shouldn't assume that, well, okay, well the money will just be given to them. Yeah. You know, like that's just not how it works. Yeah. Yep. I've got a friend who is a really crappy worker and you probably know who I'm talking about, but, um, you know, it's always like kind of the excuse thing, like, like they'll make the excuse of, you know, I'm just unlucky or, you know, mm -hmm. bad things always happen to me or nobody realizes the work I do when in reality, he's just a crappy worker. And mm -hmm. it's like, if you would just have some, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you see that one. Cause obviously he doesn't see it and nobody mm -hmm. tells him. Um, but I think if he would just sit down and really be honest with himself, I feel like he would see that and go, Oh, I'm just, I'm not bringing the value that they're paying me for, mm -hmm. or I'm not bringing enough value so that they pay me more. Mm -hmm. So how can I come bring more value to my job? Right. But yeah, like they sure. don't even think that way. Yeah. So it's, it's tough to get in there. I remember reading yeah. a book mm. that made me think a little differently. It was Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And it talked about the guy who comes in and shows up late, or sorry, shows up early and <laughs> works late and is always trying to make sure he's busy and picks up extra tasks and just tries to be as valuable as possible mm -hmm. to his environment. So he learns what his boss wants, what his boss expects. Mm -hmm. And he goes and goes the extra mile to do all those things and more that that's the kind of guy that the boss is going to love. Right. Right. So yep. we had this guy that I used to work with and um, we were working for this guy. He was super kind of particular and he had a bunch of weird ways that he liked things done. And then we had this one guy in the company that, we all called him a kiss ass. Mm -hmm. We were like, this guy's such a kiss ass because he would go and learn what the boss wanted mm -hmm. and exactly how the boss wanted it done. And he would make sure and get those things done exactly how the boss wanted it done mm -hmm. and more. And the boss loved him to death for it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And paid him very, very well. And he mm -hmm. always had a job and he always got treated really well. Like he got mm -hmm. paid more. He had a company vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he just had it, he had it made. Right. And it's not really that he was a kiss ass. 
It's just that he brought more value to the boss. Sure. Yeah. Than anybody sure. else there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I got on that, but it's something to think about. Excuses. Like he didn't yeah, have excuses, excuse. right? Mm-hmm. Zero excuses. Mm-hmm. Me in that situation, I was going, yeah, but I don't want to be a kiss ass. Sure. Yeah. There was a perception okay. issue. Your limiting belief was the mm-hmm. opinion of my peers is more important because it's like in my right. mind, when I hear somebody say, I don't want to be a kiss ass, like, oh, you don't want people to think you're a kiss ass. Because if there's exactly. nobody in this room, you'll kiss ass all day because it obviously gets you what you want. <laughs> but when everybody's yep. around you, you're like, I can't be a kiss ass because my buddies are here. But yeah, that's going to that's gonna hold you back. Yep. And yeah, and I mean, like, don't make excuses. It comes back to things that we've talked to about before. It's like, if we want to take them, we need to take the most responsibility possible of our lives and our situations because we are in the yeah. best positions to change them and improve them. And we yep. should always be looking for opportunities to do that. And if we find ourselves making these excuses, we should like train ourselves to stop and to think about what we're saying and then to realize how can I actually change what I'm doing? And because yeah, because like if we're making excuses about other things, like I can't affect that, right? Right. Like, I was late dropping my kids off because, you know, the lights were all red and all this and those roads were cold. It's like, all right, well, next time, like when my daughter's like, we're late. Like, whose fault is it? And I'm like, well, ultimately, it's my fault because I'm the one in charge here. So if you're late right. to school, it's my fault. You yep. know, even if even if you took 45 minutes in the shower or whatever, it's still on me to be an understanding like one, either I have to make time for my daughter, get her up at 3 a.m. to take her shower or I have to like push this envelope and really like do something to enact change. Ultimately it's on me. It's not on my 10 year old daughter, my nine year old daughter that she's late to school. Yeah. And it's the same thing when you're growing a business, right? Mm -hmm. And so the weird thing about growing a business is it's things like this, like those little shifts of like taking ownership um, for the crap, you know, and dealing Mm -hmm. with it and figuring it out. It's really, you're re- it, like growing the business end of things really isn't that hard. Sure. It's the developing the character that it takes to be the business owner you need to be. That's the hard part. Sure. It's really more of a personal growth journey than it is a journey of building a business. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I think like, and we can just end with something along these lines. Like I think that growing a business is a really cool pursuit because the person you need to be to do it, to do it well and to do it right with integrity is a person you'd want to be anyway. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a courageous person. It's a person who can analyze risk and take the ones that make sense. It's a person that does what he says he does or she, and then they, they execute on it and there isn't waffling. There isn't, you know, endless excuse making. And that's cool because it's an opportunity for us to sort of step in that space, um, to be challenged and to push us to be the people who, well, we'd really want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's cool. Thanks, Jared. That was, um, yeah, cool. Helpful conversation. Yeah. That was fun. Later, Helms. See ya. Hey guys, if you liked that episode and you want to see more content like that, I picked out a special episode just for you. All you got to do is click right here. Go ahead and do it. Just click right there.